the moment you want the truth, as badly as you just now wanted air, you'll find it. We can show you the truth, but you have to want it. Show me. I want to know the truth. that I guarantee is probably going to make your skin crawl. Thousands of bees on the attack in Arizona. More than a dozen people were victimized before these bees were finally chased away. This video is alarming, probably unlike anything you've ever seen before. And ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has the story for us this morning. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Paula. An absolutely terrifying ordeal for these people. Many of them were in a mosque when the bees suddenly flew inside and started stinging. The swarm was so big, roads in the area had to be shut down until crews could get the dangerous problem under control. They're swarming all in there. Chaos in Arizona when 20,000 bees sent worshipers running through the streets, desperately swatting away an attacking swarm outside of this Phoenix mosque. There was a number of people there. We're at this church. There's people at a bus stop, people walking. So we're going to have a whole bunch of them. More than a dozen people in the area stung by the bees after they started swarming. The dangerous pests even flying into the building. Yeah, I could see a bunch of them in that room where that door was open. They start to attack us and then I run away. Firefighters rushing to the scene, keeping the enraged bees at bay by spraying the area down with a special foam that helps calm the insects. Victims covering up with blankets and jackets as they try to escape the angry swarm. Three little kids allegedly involved in one big plot. First grade students at this Anchorage charter school suspended after allegedly plotting to poison and kill a fellow student. School officials say they found out about the morbid alleged plan only after another classmate overheard the students talking about it. We're grateful that we had students come forward and share their concern. According to police, the young girls plan to put silica gel preservation packets from their lunchtime food bags into another student's lunch. The students believing the packets were poisonous. They're marked with do not consume warnings. They're actually non-toxic, but the tiny beads do pose a choking hazard. We also will talk to students about where they learn this um, and do they recognize the seriousness of their comments and their actions. Now to the index of other news and the CIA accidentally leaving explosive material on a school bus. Students in Loudoun County, Virginia, riding that bus two days this week before the discovery was made under the hood of the bus. CIA canine units had been using the school bus during a training exercise. Tonight, a Virginia state trooper is fighting for his life after a gunman opened fire at a Greyhound bus station in Richmond. What started out as a standard police training program quickly turned into a deadly rampage at the Richmond Greyhound bus station. <laughs> Trooper Chad Dermeyer, a former Marine seen here at his police academy graduation in 2014, was taking part in the drill, which tests police officers scouting for suspicious activity at public transit sites. Just seconds after he approached a man inside the doors of the station, that man pulls a gun and opens fire, shooting Dermeyer at close range multiple times. All units be advised, we have an active shooting. As two other troopers began firing back, two female bystanders hit in the hail of bullets. This man was like, get down, get down, threw me to the ground, was like, crawl, crawl. The shooter retreats to the terminal's restroom. As soon as I came out the bathroom, we started shooting. Taken to a hospital, that suspect dies of his wounds. An FBI SWAT team descends on the scene, sweeping it to make sure there is no other threat. normal here in the uh, Times Square area, but uh, give it about an hour or so ago. Take a look at this video. It was like a ghost town around here. The main reason because of this truck, the deal was is that according to NYPD, uh, it was left unattended. Um, no one knew who the driver was. The thing was running. There were also wires on the seat. It had Georgia plates, but that truck uh, was traced back to uh, the Brooklyn area. Uh, police right now are questioning the driver of that vehicle, but that uh, was enough for uh, the uh, um, NYPD to get real serious about it and clear out this section of Times Square. We're talking about uh, 7th and uh, 46 uh, around Broadway. That all uh, basically telling people to get the heck out of here. You know what? This all happened about 
the good six hours right uh, before this. This is when the Port Authority had to evacuate part of the uh, south wing. This after a package was found there with the words Ukraine on it. Uh, Although law enforcement getting serious again, saying, you know what, they'd rather be safe than sorry and told people to get the heck out of there. And um, that was a forced evacuation. They gave the all clear on that. Uh, back here at the Times Square, uh, the people were really serious about what they're hearing from law enforcement. When law enforcement said move, that's exactly what they did. Heading down 46 and they diverted everyone off of this section. So we went around and we got the further end of 46 and went to dinner. But we saw people kind of in a... A frantic move. So we thought they were running. To they were actually, running? Uh, yeah, they were moving quick. People were moving we very quick. That they were but daddy doesn't feel happy as a boy. So um, we have decided to help daddy become the person that his brain and his heart tell him that he really is. So instead of, yes, exactly. So when mommy and daddy went on that date on Saturday, we went and got some new clothes and um, we got like all new girl clothes and we got daddy some makeup. And now daddy's gonna wear some makeup and wear girls clothes and grow, maybe grow daddy's hair out. So what do you think about all of that baby? Good. Are you okay with it? Yeah. You know that daddy's still going to be the same person and still going to be your daddy forever? Yeah. And what do you think of daddy's new name? You like it? Can you look at the camera and tell daddy Mallory what you think? It feels good! Can you tell, him, tell her how much you love her? Daddy is a her? Daddy is a her! Daddy, I love you so much! Even though you're a her, I still love you. Aww. Tonight in North Carolina, they are facing a business boycott over a law that critics consider anti-gay. This week, Georgia's governor vetoed a similar bill, but North Carolina's governor is defending his new law. Protesters spilled into the streets of Raleigh last night. More than 80 business leaders released a letter yesterday calling for a repeal of the measure. They include Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg and Apple's Tim Cook. North Carolina's largest corporation, that's Bank of America, also tweeted that it wants a repeal. Mark Straussman is at the state capitol in Raleigh with a standoff dividing North Carolina's leaders. Mark, good morning. Good morning. Ever since this became law exactly a week ago, calls to repeal it have grown. But the law's chief defender, the state's governor, insists the real issue is privacy rights and calls criticism a vicious nationwide smear campaign. North Carolina has been the target of a vicious nationwide smear campaign. North Carolina Governor Pat McCrory is digging in. I that we will win. As calls to reverse the state's new law grow louder. With last week's approval of House Bill 2, North Carolina passed legislation that prohibits local governments from creating their own ordinances to protect the gay and transgender community. It also requires transgender people to use only restrooms and locker rooms that match the gender on their birth certificate. The state's Attorney General, Roy Cooper, has refused to defend it. Not only is this new law a national embarrassment, it will set North Carolina's economy back. When you are the state's lawyer, you are a lawyer first and a politician second. Hours later, Governor McCrory took aim at Cooper, his opponent in the state's governor race this year. He can't select which laws he will defend. Several activist groups filed suit against the state on Monday, saying the law violates the most basic guarantees of equal treatment. This law is simply about discrimination. James Essex is with the American Civil Liberties Union, one of the suit's plaintiffs. The country is responding to this new law by saying we don't support discrimination against anybody, including LGBT people. That's the direction America is moving in, and it's really disappointing to see North Carolina go the other way. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warns that the Zika virus in the U.S. could spread much farther north than previously thought. The CDC originally focused on the southeast when it looked at the location of the mosquitoes that carry the virus. But the new guidance shows that the two species have a far greater range that could stretch to big cities like New York and San Francisco. A 
new lawsuit is challenging the Food and Drug Administration for approving a type of genetically engineered salmon. The lawsuit brings together a group of environmental, commercial, fishing, and consumer groups in opposition to what's been dubbed Franken salmon. What is your goal in filing this suit against the FDA? What's remarkable about this, I understand, is that they will not even require the salmon to be labeled, correct? That's true. I think uh, one of the most important things to keep in mind, too, is that this is the first time any country has ever approved a genetically engineered animal for food. And as you mentioned, another um, issue is that the Food and Drug Administration is allowing the labeling to be voluntary rather than requiring mandatory labeling. Another U.S. city is being rocked by water contamination, this time due to fracking. A study from Stanford University shows fracking and other oil and gas operations have contaminated the groundwater in Pavilion, Wyoming. These findings raise concerns about possible water pollution in other heavily fracked communities on the West Coast. Here's our Chief Ashley Banks. Pavilion, Wyoming, a city that has been a flashpoint in the national debate over the potential impact of fracking on drinking water, is one of the first cities to discover contamination within its water source. According to scientists at Stanford University, as early as the 1990s, when oil and gas development was booming in the area, residents began complaining of tainted drinking water. And in 2011, the EPA released a draft study indicating oil and gas contaminated the town's water. However, after criticism from the fracking industry and Wyoming politicians, the EPA shut down its investigation in 2013, turning over its findings to state regulators. The state then published a study saying so far it has found no proof of contamination. However, in 2016, Stanford University researchers conducted a study finding that the water in Pavilion, Wyoming has been contaminated. Well, Uganda has drafted a law to jail parents who decline to immunize children below the age of five. Many myths surround immunization in Uganda. Some parents claim it causes severe disabilities in children. A door-to-door -door polio vaccination campaign has started in Uganda. All children below the age of five are getting the dose but some parents are not interested. I do not want to immunize my child because I have heard of cases where children were immunized with an expired drug and it caused disability. Health officials are trying to encourage as many parents as possible to embrace vaccination. Lawmakers believe if the bill is passed into law, it will help save many lives of children who die from preventable diseases. They are now urging neighboring countries like South Sudan and Democratic Republic of Congo to strengthen their capacity to fight the spread of immunizable diseases. Now fears of a measles outbreak in Northern California. A student at a California elementary school with one of the lowest vaccination rates in the state, by the way, came to school infected with the disease just before spring break. That forced the school northeast of Sacramento to shut down, and it is not allowing unvaccinated students back in until April 8th at the earliest. Chief Correspondent Jonathan Hunt is following the story live from our Los Angeles newsroom. Jonathan. John, officials are fighting to prevent what is so far one case of measles becoming a major outbreak of the highly infectious virus in Northern California. And that's not easy preventing it in a charter school where almost half of kindergartners are not vaccinated because many parents simply don't believe vaccinations are safe. You need to do a lot more research on what these additives are doing. That's the reason that these parents are deciding not to vaccinate, not because they don't want their kids protected. Of course not. Of course they want that to happen. But school officials say they can't take any chances and unvaccinated children will not be allowed back into the Yuba River Charter School until at least April 8th. The Liberian government on Friday confirmed a new Ebola case traced to a 30-year-old woman. A statement from the Ministry of Health said a woman was taken to the Redemption Hospital Thursday evening and died on arrival. This latest pronouncement by the ministry comes more than two months after the virus that killed more 4,800 was declared over in the country.
The health official told CNC that a recurrence is a setback to the progress made in curtailing the virus in a West African nation. In the southeast this evening, at least 13 million people are facing the threat of flash floods and tornadoes. Here's Mark Strassman. Driving rain in Warner Robins, Georgia, left some streets looking more like high seas. I've never gone through that before. Residents like 81-year-old Shirley Polini were making breakfast when trees started cracking and falling on houses. You can replace a house, you can replace, but you cannot replace a person. According to the National Weather Service, winds topped 80 miles per hour this morning, powerful enough to flip this 18-wheeler. A pair of tornadoes whipped up in other parts of Georgia, leaving a trail of torn off rooftops and twisted debris. In Louisiana, heavy rain caused flooding ankle deep in parts of New Orleans. There it is. Last night, there were reports that five tornadoes had swept across Indiana, Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. It's getting bigger. After a twister touchdown in Lowndes County, Mississippi, emergency workers were forced to respond by foot, weaving around toppled power lines and trees blocking roads. 50 homes near New Hope were damaged, but no one was hurt. Randy and Jenny Lawrence feel guilty because two of their trees landed on their neighbor's house. They are such wonderful people, and I would have given anything for these trees to have fallen on our house instead of theirs. Peru has led to the deaths of at least a dozen people and seriously affected thousands of others. Forecasters say the country is experiencing the heaviest rains and highest temperatures in two decades due to this year's El Nino weather phenomenon. A lorry driver is rescued from atop his truck as a swollen river threatens to drag him to near certain death. Thousands of passengers and hundreds of trucks carrying fruit and vegetables to the capital were left stranded as rivers broke their banks along Peru's central highway. Floods have battered Peru's coastal region where three quarters of the population live. Later than expected, the El Nino phenomenon has arrived with a vengeance. In terms of climate statistics, as, as long as we have you know, reliable statistics in Peru for the last 60 or 70 years or so, this, is, uh, this El Nino is ranked number three in both temperature anomalies and rainfall anomalies. In other words, weather conditions linked to this El Nino have caused the heaviest rains and hottest temperatures in two decades. The weather phenomenon caused by the warming of sea surface temperatures in the Pacific has also caused drought in the country's southern highlands. Drought is lingering on in Southeast Asia. Now farmers are struggling in Thailand as reduced water for irrigation has hurt agriculture, particularly rice cultivation. With less rain expected this year because of El Nino, the government has implemented drought mitigation measures. They call on farmers to stop irrigating paddy fields to save underground water and encourage them to grow other plants such as potatoes, mushrooms and corns, which use less water. Two earthquakes hit central Oklahoma overnight, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, a 4.2 magnitude in Logan County, followed by a 4.1 magnitude in the same area just a few hours later. The USGS says you could feel it as far as north as Wichita, Kansas, though there's no reported damage or injuries. Earthquakes are nothing unusual for America, considering how often they happen in California along the fault lines. But it's a different story in Oklahoma. Its tremors are believed to be caused by oil and gas fracking. On Monday, the USGS released a report saying Oklahoma has a one in eight chance of damaging quakes in 2016, surpassing the quake state of California. The U.S. Geological Survey said an earthquake measuring 6.1 on the Richter scale jolted 120 kilometers northeast of Angram, Papua New Guinea on Friday. The epicenter, with a depth of 14.75 kilometers, was initially determined to be at 3.433 degrees south latitude and 144.9489 degrees east longitude. Residents that were evacuated, they're not very happy about all this. They were told right away. 
about after between 9 and 10 this morning. And if you take a look at where the hole is, there used to be a fence that separated the area where you can see the mobile homes. The hole right now is approximately 60 feet wide and 35 feet deep. And we're told that crews were actually out here yesterday working on a smaller sinkhole right there trying to shore it up when it opened up more today and then it compromised the utility lines, the sewer and the water lines. And because they're not sure if this hole is going to get any bigger, they just took some extra precautions and decided to evacuate six of the homes you see there. A farmer in South China's Guangxi Autonomous Region suffered heavy losses after a sinkhole appeared in his fish pond. The incident occurred in Guiping City at about 4 a.m. on March 24th, when water levels at the pond were seen falling at a dramatic rate. At around 9 a.m., the pond almost completely drained, and what's left of the water in the pond was flowing down a gaping hole. The owner of the farm says he lost about 25 tons of fish. Sentinel 3A satellite recently began providing data from orbit. This very early image, recorded on March 3, 2016, takes us over the River Nile and Delta and the surrounding desert areas of Northeast Africa and parts of the Middle East. Very distinct is Egypt, a country connecting Northeast Africa with the Middle East, home to millennia-old monuments still sitting along the lush Nile Valley. In the center of the image, capital city Cairo, with the Nile snaking northwards, is... Come with me, and I'll show you what every one of you can do single-handed. You can tune in this wonderful new Westinghouse television set with just one hand like this. Let us not forget that in TV we have the greatest instrument for mass persuasion. Something else at work here that is not just what children eat, but what they see. Today, even secularists are beginning to understand that our obsession with entertainment is destroying the very soul of our culture. Why put up with a set that isn't really up to date and has an old-fashioned small screen when you can get this wonderful new 17-inch Westinghouse set at a modest price? Flashes of lightning ripped through the black sky in angry silver streaks. I am totally convinced now more than ever that cable television, filthy movies, both in the theater and the home VCRs, is going to be the number one cause of hearts being prepared for the Antichrist. The number one. Because the eye is the gate to the heart. And he's going to march right through the eye and take control and sit on the throne of the heart because of filthy, corrupted, jaded eyes. We know the Antichrist is in full control of the secular media. All secular television, theater, all the networks, all the printed material, all now are under the control of the spirit of Antichrist. What, who but Antichrist could so bias the American press and so bias the editors and the writers and the actors so that abortion is called a right rather than a sin? Who but the Antichrist could justify now euthanasia? Did you hear recently, uh, read in the newspaper, a uh, psychiatrist now in the United States who believes in euthanasia, killing off the old and infirm? He's willing to kill off anybody who's mentally ill. Who but Antichrist is a killer? Kill off the old and the infirm. It, we ought to be shocked in the United States because in the Philippines and in Asia, they honor and they revere their old folks. Those who are old, they're revered. Here, we want to kill them. Who but the spirit of Antichrist could be behind it? Who but Antichrist could mock everything that's sacred and holy and worshipped in filthy movies and wicked, vile programs on television? The Antichrist is producing MTV. Literally, the Antichrist spirit is in full control of Fox television. I, I read, I don't watch that stuff but, uh, because I don't have television, but 
MTV, from what I read, and Fox Television, in a newspaper, you just look at some of the reviews and some of the absolute filth. Who but the Antichrist? Who but the spirit of Antichrist could be behind it? And folks, he's getting bolder and bolder. Our society is on the brink of becoming a raging hell. But sadly, that same Antichrist spirit is moving rapidly into the church of Jesus Christ. We talk about the gates of hell not prevailing against the church. But folks, you've got to know that he's talking about a certain church, an overcoming holy remnant church. He's not talking about that great church mess that's out there being ruled and reigned by the spirit of Antichrist. He's talking about a particular church called out from the world. Only that church will prevail. The gates of hell will not touch that church. But I'm telling you right now, all over the United States, the spirit of Antichrist is absolutely establishing churches. You go ahead, and you go to the show, go to a movie, pluck down your five or six dollars, and you sit there, and listen to me good enough, you sit there, and you sit there while there's blood and violence, and you sit there while the name of Jesus Christ is cursed and mocked and run through the mud and trampled, and the name of your holy God is cursed. And I'm going to tell you what you've done. You've just drunk from the cup of the devil, you have fellowship with demons, and you've provoked God to jealousy. And you have supported the Antichrist spirit. And the Antichrist spirit that Satan Satan sees where you're at. He knows where you're sitting in the seat of the ungodly. And you're going to sit there and you're going to take that. Even PG-13 now. Even PGs curse the name of Jesus. Do you not even have the grace to get up and walk out? Do you sit there? You wouldn't sit there and let them curse your wife. Or your husband. You wouldn't sit there and let them curse your... They named your children like that. You would get up and scream and say, Stop it and run out. And yet you'll sit there and let the name of your Christ be maimed. Sit in front of television and watch filthy, filthy, rotten stuff. And let that spirit of Antichrist seep into your soul. Provoking the Lord to jealousy. You know what it is? It's called a sacrifice to the devil. That's what God calls it, a sacrifice to demons. God help us. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their people, and they shall be my people. Look at me, please. How can such an incredible, awful, frightful thing happen that at one time, the living God sat on his throne, ruling and reigning in a vessel. How is it now that the Holy Ghost has departed and that temple, that throne of the heart has been vacated through lust, through pride, through covetousness, through gossip, through slander, through all of the things that we've been warned about time after time after time. How is it that we have many Christians who have grown careless, who don't walk righteously before him anymore. And how is it that the spirit of Antichrist has moved in now and taken over and according to this Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, he now sits in his temple showing himself to be God. In other words, he is in control. He is absolutely in control. There is always going to be a Christ on your throne. I don't care where you are, serving Jesus or serving the Lord, there will always be a Christ on this throne. It will either be Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, or the Antichrist. There will be a Christ. Every man walking these streets has a Christ on his throne. Now folks, listen to me. There are going to be Christians overcome by the spirit of Antichrist that's at work right now. They're going to be overcome. These are those who have escaped the pollutions of the world, who were delivered by the power of God through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But now they've turned aside, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. They have knew the way. They knew the way of righteousness. Then, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it's happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his own vomit again. The sow that was washed 
to her own wallowing in the mire. How many, look at me please, how many do you know who have turned away from God and they're going back to their old habits? They've gone back to their old world. Folks, I'm going to tell you, you don't just backslide. You don't just fall away from the Lord. What does the sinner have to fall away from? He can't fall away from anything. He's already in the pit. The only falling away are those who had something. You don't just fall away from Jesus. You fall into something. It's not just the falling away. It's falling into. You fall away from Christ and you fall into the spirit of Antichrist. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked, or the Antichrist, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, we are seeing in these perilous times the beginning of an Antichrist movement that is sweeping this nation through Canada, United States, and all around the world. It's not New Age, it's Antichrist. It's Antichrist. And His Spirit now is moving and taking control over all the secular. He's taking control of government, and now that Spirit is moving into the church. Now listen to this, little children, it is the last time how many believe that? How many believe this is the last time? Folks, if it was the last time when John wrote this, can you imagine how late it is now? Almost 2,000 years later, how much closer, how more real is this text? Little children, it's the last time. You've heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are, what? Many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. It means that there are many that have been infiltrated and possessed by the spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist, John is saying, is already moving. It's in many hearts. Now, in this passage, John is telling us those whose hearts are still in love with the world, those who are still bound by lust, have opened themselves to the spirit of Antichrist. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, it's not of the Father. Who's it of? It's of the Antichrist. And there are many that are still given over to that. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is what? Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Look at me please. Anyone, John is saying, who has not come under the total Lordship of Jesus Christ. Has opened himself to the spirit of Antichrist. If you sit here this morning and he is not Lord of everything in your life. You've given him a portion of your life. You're serving him 90%. But he is not totally Lord in your life. You have denied him. You have denied his Lordship. It's not that you go around cursing his name, but you have denied him. You have not believed to him for full salvation. You have believed and trusted him for half salvation. You are not serving him with all your heart and mind and soul and body. You have opened yourself, according to John, to the inroads, the inmaking of the Antichrist spirit into your heart. This is so very, very clear. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Son, Father also. It's not just to say, well, I believe Jesus was God in flesh. It's saying, Jesus, you are God in flesh in me. With all power and all authority over lust, over sin and everything else. And I yield to your Lordship. Those who are righteous, who worship God in spirit and truth, are the prime targets of the Antichrist spirit. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. Look at me, please. This spirit of Antichrist is opposed to those who walk closely with the Lord Jesus Christ, those who walk with God in intimacy, and those who are worshipers. This is what the devil is after. This is what the Antichrist wants for himself. And he's going to come against everybody. He's going to come against every true believer who walks in the intimacy of Jesus Christ. He's going to come against you with everything the Antichrist possesses. 
that spirit, that invading spirit, he's going to come against you and try to attack you and try to get you to stop worshiping. He'll try to stop your intimacy with the Father. He'll try to give you doubt and fear about the advocacy of the cross of Jesus Christ. He will do everything to make inroads to hinder your worship. There's nothing the devil wants in this church more than the worship. To kill and destroy worship. That's what he wants in you more than anything else. He will do anything. He's not out to get you to be a drug addict, an alcoholic, prostitute. He's not trying to get you to lie and steal and curse. He'll do that only if it disturbs your worship. He'll do it only to rob God of his praises. He's after worshipers. And if you're a worshiper, true worshiper, don't be surprised when all the everything out of hell comes against you. When the Antichrist spirit comes and tries to knock you away. Don't be surprised by it. Who opposeth and exalt himself above all that is called God and all that is worship. Paul warns that a spirit of lawlessness is at work in the world and in the church. And now we know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. What and who is withholding the Antichrist from taking over the whole nation and the whole world right now? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit who abides in you. Not the Holy Spirit that in some cosmic atmosphere. But the Holy Ghost in the church. The Holy Ghost in you and I. And it's this church and other Holy Ghost church and Holy Ghost people that are holding back the anarchy of hell and Satan in this city. They talk about the crime rate going down or up. Folks, if the Holy Ghost was lifted from this church and other churches, this city would be a raging hell right now. Because the stench of hell is already in our schools. The stench of hell is in our courts. The stench of hell is in our churches. And can you imagine what it would be if the Holy Ghost begins to step aside and say, Be revealed. It's a Holy Ghost holding back the storm. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Careless, lazy Christians are going to be overcome. They're not going to be able to stand. You're careless about reading your Bible. You're careless about the things of God today. Folks, the perilous times that are coming and the, the, the closer... You see, Jesus says the closer we get to His coming is going to be ever-increasing light. And folks, there's ever-increasing revelation, ever-increasing power of the Antichrist is being released by the devil right now before the full revelation of the, of the Antichrist. Because when He comes... He's coming, it's just going to be the last step, like stepping through a piece of tissue paper. It will have all been prepared. The hearts are ready, all prepared for his revelation. He's not going to have to prepare anything. It, the devil will have already prepared it. The spirit of Antichrist will have already accomplished his will. And sadly, many Christians are going to be overcome. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Nick Austin joins us. For God will bring every deed into judgment, Ben Judah, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, and I will give every man according to his ways and according to the things he has done. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. For by grace you are saved, through faith. This is not for yourselves. It is the gift of God. Be reconciled to God. 
God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. He who believes in the Son is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Repent. Jesus is coming. Don't throw your life away. Give it to Jesus while there's still time, please. And he will hold us accountable. Time is running out. And I don't want you to go to hell. <laughs> You've sinned against God, like I have. He calls us to love and obey him in everything we do. What we do in front of people, what we do in secret. Even down to what we think. God loves you. 2,000 years ago, he proved that. God became a man, Jesus Christ, and he suffered and died on the cross to save you. He literally died to take your punishment and my punishment upon himself so that we could be forgiven and set free. When Jesus rose from the dead and he ascended to heaven, he defeated death and hell, and he's offering you and I eternal life. God can do anything. If you are willing, God can save you. Confess your sins and turn away from them. And put your faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus, if it's not too late, forgive me for it. My sins. Jesus is King. Jesus is King. He is Lord for.